The risk disclosures appearing on the screen are important for you to read and understand. Please pause the video now to read through the disclosures or listen in as the disclosures are read aloud at the conclusion of this video. So a few notes on intermarket versus intercommodity. I see in the booklet Jim's going to touch on this a little bit later. Intermarket spreads are the same commodity. So corn, corn, wheat, wheat. They're also known as calendar or time spreads. These spreads have reduced margin requirements because you're in the same commodity. You're just long one, short the other. And the other spreads are intercommodity. These are related markets, but there's some margin benefits. Some may have more, some actually may have less. And the price calculation on intercommodity spreads can be a little bit different. Examples crude oil. If you're trading crude oil versus heating oil, for example, crude oil is priced in dollars per barrel, where heating oil is priced in cents per gallon. So you'll have to do the conversion over to dollars per barrel to price out that spread. And the exchange websites have the formulas to do so, or you can call your broker and he, should, he or she should be able to help you out there. Okay, so here are some intercommodity spreads I just wanted to go over with you. Uh, cattle versus hogs. Actually, are there any Longhorn fans or any Razorback fans here? Yeah. All right, so cattle versus hogs. This is a play on supply versus demand. What are households eating, pork or beef? The barger benefits for this spread are about 70% if you're holding each of these contracts. 10-year note versus the 30-year bond. This on the trading floor is known as the knob spread. So you can actually call your broker and say, I want to trade the knob spread. He or she should know exactly what you're talking about. This is trading on the yield curve, right? Short term versus uh, longer term. The margin benefit for this spread is 48%. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you had the 10-year note contract and the 30-year bond contract in two different accounts, you have the full margin requirement. If you're doing this as a spread in the same account, you only need 48% of the combined totals of the individual margin requirements. The Canadian bacon spread, anybody trading this one? <laughs> All right, yeah, you got it. This is a fake one. Um, actually, traders on the floor, brokers would send new runners to send them out. Hey, go get me the uh, Canadian bacon spread. I need the quote on that market. And uh, you'd have a new runner running around trying to figure out the quote on this uh, spread, but it, it doesn't exist. And actually, pork bellies are defunct now, so they don't have to come up with a new joke spread for all the young runners. Gold versus silver. Yeah, these are two major markets, two of the major precious metal markets. And you can trade both of these in your account as a spread. You're trading which one is going to outpace the other. And the margin benefits are, are great for this. It's $12,000 roughly, the last time I checked, for this spread, as opposed to $20,000 for the two contracts on their own. Oats versus meal, the oatmeal spread. I was actually trying to come up with another joke spread, but this is an actual spread. Reason being, they're related markets. Oats and soybean meal are feed markets. So the, uh, the exchanges recognize there's some relation there, and there's a margin benefit to the spread. It was about 48%. This one here is the crust spread. This is traded by uh, producers, farmers, and end users, like a General Mills, uh, when they have to deal with the soybeans soybean meal, and soybean oil contracts. And what you're doing is buying beans, selling meal, and selling oil, or you can do the reverse crush spread, selling the beans, buying the bean meal, and selling the bean oil. And you can do so at a one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one ratio, but the proper ratio is 11, 9, 10. 11 soybean meal contracts, nine soybean oil contracts, and 10 soybean contracts. Now you're thinking, wow, that's a lot of contracts that I'm going to have in my account. But the margin benefit for the spread is 90% if you're trading this exchange uh, crush spread. And a good visual for the crush spread is taking soybeans in your hand, smashing them up. What drips out is the soybean oil, and what's left is the soybean meal. That's how I learned the crush spread. And the last one for you to hear today is the crack spread. So this is crude oil versus heating oil versus RBOB, or unleaded gasoline. So it's the refineries hedging their input costs versus their output pricing. And the proper ratio is 3 to 1. You can also trade a 1 to 1 to 1, but the proper ratio is 3 to 2 to 1. Three crude oil contracts, two heating oil contracts, and one RBOB contract. 
and the margin requirement is 51% of this spread. So you can trade three of the more volatile energy markets with reduced margin requirements and less, typically less risk than just being outright one of these contracts. And I mentioned earlier, the calculations can be a little more difficult. Crude oil's priced in dollars per barrel. Both heating oil and RBOB are priced in cents per gallon. So you need to convert it over to dollars per barrel. Again, your broker can help you with that or they've got the formulas on the exchange websites. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future performance. The risk of loss in trading futures contracts or commodity options can be substantial, and therefore, investors should understand the risks involved in taking leveraged positions and must assume responsibility for the risks associated with such investments and for their results. You should carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you in light of your circumstances and financial resources. You should read the risk disclosure accessed at www.danielstrading.com. Daniel's Trading is not affiliated with, nor does it endorse any trading system, newsletter, or similar service. Daniel's Trading does not guarantee or verify any performance claims made by such systems or services. The risk of loss in trading commodity futures and options contracts can be substantial. There is a high degree of leverage in futures trading because of small margin requirements. This leverage can work against you as well as for you and can lead to large losses as well as large gains. Strategies using combinations of positions, such as spread and straddle positions, may be as risky as taking a simple long or short position. Examples of historic price moves or extreme market conditions are not meant to imply that such moves or conditions are common occurrences or are likely to occur.